Well, hey, everybody. There's obviously lots of things to do when it comes to layers. Um, what I'm going to tell you is that in this first video, I'm really just going to start with the basics. All right. So if you're somewhat familiar with layers, you can probably skip the first couple of videos here and get into some of the more advanced stuff, which we do get from beginning to advanced pretty quickly here with layers. But in the first one here, I just want to start off on the ground level for anyone coming in and wondering, what's the point of layers? You know, why should I be using these things? All right, so the first thing I want to do here is just make sure that we can all see the layers palette. If you go to the window menu, go down to layers, that's going to show your layers palette, and it should appear over here on the right-hand side. The other thing that I wanted to do is make sure that we're all kind of looking at Photoshop the same way. And if you go to the window menu, you go down to application frame. And this is only on the Mac because a PC automatically has an application frame. Where on the Mac, this is a new feature inside of CS4. All right? But it makes working inside of Photoshop a lot easier. And I, I, it makes teaching a lot easier too because that way I can be assured that we're all working with the, the same basic framework and layout when it comes to being inside of Photoshop here. So do me a favor, turn on application frame and what it does is it keeps your palettes from floating. Photoshop now becomes this one frame that you can take and drag anywhere. All right, so let's jump into it. We're gonna go up to the file menu, go down to open, and I'm gonna open up the first image for this lesson, lesson 1A. And what I've got here is just a composite of two images. All right, but if you look over in the layers palette, you're going to see that it's got one layer in it because the layers palette stores all of your layers. If I had more layers in here, I'd see more of these little uh, these little thumbnails that you see on the right hand side. But I've only got one layer, so I created this composite and then I flattened everything together. And this is the way a lot of images come, especially a JPEG. JPEGs don't support layers, so if somebody gives you a JPEG image, no matter how many things it's got going on inside of it, it's only going to have one layer. All right, we're going to talk about what image types do support layers in the next lesson, but for now, just imagine somebody's giving you an image and it's already got everything composited inside of here and then somebody tells you you know what I'd like to see a little bit less of this gentleman here maybe maybe get rid of some of the glasses and just show me more sky well I could take my eraser tool because I want to basically I want to erase part of the gentleman on the right I could take my eraser brush and I, I've gone up here and I've gotten a really large size brush here 400 pixels and took the hardness all the way down to zero and you'd think I can start to erase on the gentleman here and when I do and I click and I start to drag see what happens I'm not just erasing on the gentleman I'm actually erasing to the background here which is nothing which is white alright that's the problem with layers is there is nothing under there as soon as I erase it there I don't have two different images here I've got one image all on one layer so when I erase Photoshop doesn't really know what else to do other than just get rid of all these pixels so it's got no sky behind it so I'm just going to hit Command-Z or Control-Z on the PC to undo. So that's one reason. Another reason would be if somebody wanted to move this gentleman to some other part of the photo, well, I can't do that. I could take the Move tool, but I can't just move the gentleman. Wherever I move him, the plane's going too because it's all on one layer. And then the last thing, someone might say, hey, can you just turn the gentleman to a black and white? Well... If I went up to image adjustments here, and a real quick way to turn a black and white is just desaturate. If I want to desaturate, it turns the whole photo to black and white. But we do have the ability, I'm going to undo, we do have the ability to make a selection and only affect part of that selection. So I could take my lasso tool and maybe just draw a quick selection around him. And really, there'd be no easy way to select the faded gentleman here. Um, and I could draw a quick selection. I go under image adjustments go down to desaturate again and it does indeed remove the color from that area but when I deselect you're gonna see that's not really the effect we're looking for I don't want this this harsh difference between black and white and color I want that more smoothly faded area and again this is where we run into problems because we don't have multiple layers alright so now let's go ahead and start this over again and let's work with layers so I'm gonna close this image I don't need to save it and we're going to go up to the file menu here, go down to open, and I'm going to open up the other two images for lesson one. Lesson 1B, and then I'll hold down my command key on the Mac, control on the PC, and hit lesson C there, and open up both of these images. And now you can see here, I've got two different images. 
What we want to do is take this one and put it into the other one. So I'm going to go to select all. All right. And then I'm just going to copy it because I've selected the entire image and now I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go to my other image here. And notice I'm working with the tabbed interface. You might be working with the untabbed interface where you have floating windows, in which case you can click on one or just click on another one. But if you want to work with the tabbed interface, which I think is better, uh, just click on this title bar and just drag it up toward the top in CS4 and you'll be able to tab those windows. And now I'm going to click on Lesson 1B and I'm going to go to Edit Paste. And watch what it does here. See my layers palette? See how it automatically created a brand new layer when I pasted that image in? So now I've got two different layers here and I can do different things. For example, remember moving the gentleman. I could take my move tool and I can move him over toward the right more. Okay, because he's now not part of the layer that's underneath it. I'm just moving the layer that I have targeted. I know it's targeted because that's the one that I've clicked on over here. It's even highlighted for you. The other thing is we're able to erase. So I can grab my eraser tool, and I'm not going to erase over here because that's going to be really harsh. I'm going to put about half the eraser onto the image, and I'm just going to fade it. All right, and that's why I use that big, large eraser brush. That's why I used a 400 pixel brush. And now I can start to fade that in. So you can see the difference that we get here. Okay, so now I'm erasing the gentleman, but I'm not erasing the plane that's underneath it. So that's another advantage of layers is because I'm only working on this layer. And then finally, the other example was I wanted to turn part of this to black and white. Well, all I've got to do is click on the layer, go up to the image menu, down to adjustments, and over to desaturate just like I did before. And when I click desaturate, what happens is I've only turned the layer that I had chosen inside the layers palette, I've only turned that to black and white. I've left the rest of the image alone. And that's another benefit of layers is it's only going to work on whatever layer that you've selected over here in the layers palette. So any changes you make, you can restrict to a specific layer. Okay, so there you've got a basic introduction to where this flexibility from layers comes into play. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at some of the ways where we can add more layers into our images.